resolver came to my aid and he was able to put in essentially an hourglass correction. So we're able to take that whole database and uh, run it through uh, uh, some software that Mal did and turned out to at least satisfy the producer. So you did get hands on with the, the, the film group after all? I'm sorry? You, you actually got in hands on with the film group there a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it just, you know, sooner or later, you got that much activity going on, you get to pay more attention to it. You know, it uh, yeah, I, I remember that one well because that was uh, uh, really a head scratcher. You know, what are you going to do with this a, a, a fairly large investment? At that point, we were uh, using uh, projected grids, and uh, Art Dorinsky was uh, uh, digitizing this in, in uh, two images uh, in order to get 3D data. Uh, and all of that would have just gone out the window until Mal came along and said, oh, I can solve that. Uh, the, uh, and that, that was, I think, one of the, that was probably before Tron. Yeah. It's considered the first uh, feature film use of raster computer graphics. Uh-huh. Oh, and and uh, to some extent, it meant more to us because it was, you know, total images. Whereas Tron was a matter of uh, putting uh, light flashes onto uh, fake swords, and it uh, you know, was sort of a uh, technically trivial. We felt. Okay. Uh, 